Amazing Life Head On takes an in-depth look at the life issues, gently sharing God's will on innocent human life, persuading the undecided, and inspiring defenders of life. Here are recent episodes to show you some of the topics we tackle. Marlene now uses her past experience to help rescue young girls and women from sex trafficking. She founded Rahab's Hideaway in Columbus, Ohio to offer a safe home and practical support for girls who are coping with their past. They offer housing, income, health care, education, and justice. The girls can stay up to two years at no cost while Marlene and her staff prepare them for a future without enslavement. I went, I took all the resources and money that I had. I rented a house on um, OSU's campus and we started taking in girls. When we started taking in girls, I did not realize, even though I knew the challenges that I had, I didn't realize, I thought just giving them a house would be good enough. And it wasn't at all. It was some of them had mental health issues. I had never been exposed to drugs, even in the life of prostitution. These girls were coming with addictions. Yeah, it, it was a lot. Why is it so hard for girls to get out of this industry? Oh, I think it's um, hard on many levels. One, going back home after something like this happens. And so you're, you're afraid of how are they going to look at you? How's everybody going to treat you now? So for these girls, it, it's important that we know how to, to embrace a traffic victim. Nita Bells is the regional director for Oregonians Against Trafficking Humans. The biggest threat to sex trafficking is awareness and public discussion. Nita believes churches can play an important role in educating the public, and they can be a refuge for victimized girls who are struggling with healing. If you go back to the Stockholm Syndrome, when we go out on the streets, it's not like we've got young girls running at us saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe you came for me. They will tell us where to get off. What business are we doing out there if we would try to approach them and ask them to get out? That's why it's important for the church to understand this and to begin to do services for uh, people that are being trafficked to build relationship. Churches could have a tremendous impact. They can um, start organizations within their church, contact law enforcement and say, what do you need? There's just a myriad of things they can do, but most of all, awareness. Jack and Barbara Wolke have established an amazing legacy of pro-life education and activism. They traveled the globe meeting world leaders as they work to protect innocent human life on all continents. They'll leave a remarkable legacy for the next generation of pro-lifers who will tirelessly work to see an end to abortion and renew hope for the future. You're optimistic about this nation and the future of abortion. Do you think that that includes the reversal of Roe versus Wade? I do. One, I don't think Roe versus Wade has very solid footing. I think if you look legally, uh, the, the perspective that it's a fundamental right is not in the Constitution. And I think it's ironic that they would try to use due process through privacy to create, to create a right that's not there. And what is happening with the right of the baby in the womb? Then secondly, the narrative and culture is changing and you're starting to see people creating culture of life. I believe the legacy will be seen in the generation after generation after generation of people who will look back on that era of the late 60s and the early 70s and say, what wonderful roots we have and what wonderful examples we have. The baton's been pretty much passed between you and I at mm -hmm. Life Issues Institute. What advice do you have for me as we go into the future? Well, not much. You're doing things I didn't do or didn't dream of doing. And that's one of my achievements with selecting you. I know it's probably not something in your generation that is said between men, but I, I want you to know that through our relationship, I've grown to love you and Barbara's parents. So you feel very much like family. As we look at the legacy carrying on, it's a lonesome thought to do it without Barbara or you, 
But as you said, it's an issue that's bigger than any of us and something that we need to continue. I've had the privilege, and Barbara has, of being able to organize and create a legacy, a movement uh, that's building on itself. They're doing new things in new ways. There's new challenges, you meet them. I think the current movement to stop abortion after 20 weeks will ultimately succeed. And the nation will learn that we can live without abortion. The Miss You Can Do It pageant is growing and helping more girls feel beautiful and confident in their own skin. It provides memorable experiences and encouragement for parents and their daughters who are often told what they won't be able to accomplish. Abby hopes the pageant is helping people reevaluate their ideas of beauty, both inside and out. They have an onstage question, and the girls are so smart and they're so beautiful from the inside out. They say things, their one wish, um, you know, most people would say, I want to live in a castle, I want to have a pony, and these girls just want to fit in, they just want to run with their friends, or some of them wish for a friend, and that's very heartbreaking, and, and you just realize how amazing and sensitive and smart they are. I'd like everybody to see the joy on all these yeah. girls' face, see that see how, how excited and enthralled they are with, with, with what they're doing and yeah, I'm the opportunity so excited. that they have. And I am really excited to go see those new princesses. I bet you are. <laughs> yeah. She's got a gift with, with people. She doesn't know someone who's not her friend. She's got a big heart and this personality that just shines and radiates and people want to be around her. She's touched a lot of lives already in seven years. I can't imagine how many more will be touched by you. So probably like <laughs> yeah. a bazillion. Twice as many as bazillion. Okay, two two bazillion. Yeah. <laughs> I I call it the circle of dreams, but I think we all have a dream come true, only so we can pass it on to someone else and make their dreams a reality. If I wouldn't have won Miss Iowa, I probably wouldn't have continued the pageant as big as I have. And since someone granted me my dream come true, I can pass so many dreams on to the girls downstairs and hopefully they'll be happy and confident and be able to continue passing on dreams to other people.